Hi students, I try in this educational video to technologically explain how to size the thickness of a shell in a pressure vessel or uh, the thickness of a tube subjected to external pressure based on the American calculation code ASME. Of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, for cylindrical shells and tubes with a ratio outer diameter divided by the thickness higher than 10, and based on the ASME Section A Division 1 UG-28, we have a design procedure in five steps. The step one is about the determination of the ratio L by DO and DO by T. And DO, as I explained, is the outer diameter of the shell or the outer diameter of the tube. And the T here represents a pre-selected thickness that can be equal, for example, to the thickness to the required thickness of the shell subjected to internal pressure. And as it is depicted by the figure that you see now in this slide, L represents the design length of the vessel section between support lines in the case of pressure vessel, or the total length of the tube between uh, tube sheets in the case of uh, heat exchanger, for example. Now, the step two of the design procedure is about the determination of a certain factor A. So, based on the ASME section two, part D, subpart three, we have this figure J, and as you can notice, this figure J is subdivided into uh, two complementary subfigures, at the other left and other right. The vertical axis of the figure J represents the ratio L by DO, which varies from 0 0.05 to 50, and the curves represents the ratio DO by T, which varies from 4 to 1000, and the, the horizontal axis of the figure J represents the, the factor A, which varies from 0 0.4 times 0 0.01 to 0 0.1. Now the question is how to determine the factor A based on this figure J. Well, if we have L by DO equal to 25, and we have DO by T equal to 40, we can determine the factor A as follows. So in this case, the factor A will be equal to 0 0.5. 3 times 0, 7. And it's to note here that uh, for tabular values of uh, factor A, we have to see the table J in the ASME section 2, part D, subpart 3. Now, for the step 3 of this design procedure, uh, the step 3 is about the determination of a certain factor B, and uh, based on the ASME section 2, part D, subpart 3, we have a series of uh, figures uh, CS, and in this slide uh, we use the figure CS-1, uh, which is uh, appropriate for carbon steels and uh, low alloy steels with a specified minimum yield strength less than 207 megapascal. And uh, as you can see, the horizontal axis of this uh, figure CS-1 uh, is the factor A, and the curves uh, represents the, the 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 surface temperature, and uh, here we have factor A equal to zero point three times zero seven as it is determined uh, in the step uh, two, and uh, this factor A is uh, highlighted here in uh, blue in the horizontal uh, axis, and. We have, for example, a surface temperature around 170 degrees Celsius. So uh, we use the curve uh, up to uh, 260 degrees Celsius. And the factor B is determined as follows. And we obtain a factor B around 57. It's to note here that when we have a factor A falling to the left of the applicable temperature material line, for example, a uh, factor A around 0 0.4 times 0 0.3, like uh, this case highlighted in red, it's uh, impossible to determine the factor B using the same uh, methodology. 
So in this case, uh, we have to go to directly to the step 4 without determining the factor b. It's to note also that for tabular values of the factor b, we have to see the tables CS in the ASME section 2 part D sub part 3. Now, the step 4 of this design procedure is about the determination of a certain maximum allowable external pressure PA. And uh, in this step, we have two cases. The case 1 is uh, when the value of the factor A falls to the right of the applicable material temperature line and uh, in this case uh, we can determine the factor b and the maximum allowable external pressure pa is determined based on this factor b as four times b divided by three times the ratio du by t and the second case is uh, when the factor a the value of the factor a falls to the left of the applicable material temperature line and in this case it's impossible to uh, determine the factor B and the maximum allowable external pressure PA is determined directly based on the factor A as two times the factor A multiplied by the, the modulus of elasticity of the material uh, of the shell or of the tube divided by three times the ratio du by the thickness T. Of course, here the, the modulus of elasticity of the material, uh, denoted by the letter E, is determined at the design temperature. Now, the step 5 of this design procedure is about the comparison and the decision. In this step 5, we will compare the applied external pressure to the maximum allowable external pressure. And, and, and we will have two cases. The case one, when the applied external pressure is lower than the maximum allowable external pressure, and uh, in this case, uh, the resistance is verified with the current uh, shell thickness. Uh, so it's okay. But in the second case, we can obtain uh, the applied external pressure higher than the maximum allowable external pressure. In this case, uh, the resistance is not verified and we should select a larger value for the thickness and repeat the design procedure uh, until uh, having P lower than PA. That's all for this uh, educational video. If you have any remarks or suggestions, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention.